if you think about your connection or your relationship to Jesus, the first thing I would say is, what do you mean by relationship? What does that word mean to you? What human beings consider relationships ultimately are not relationships. There, there are no true relationships on planet Earth or in time and space, and yet, of course, that's what's believed in, so the Holy Spirit and Jesus have to use what the sleeping mind believes in to reach it, because, you know, it wouldn't be a very long course if it started off, this is a course in spirit. You are only spirit. You have only one relationship, and that is with your Creator. Amen. <laughs> That's not even a pamphlet. <laughs> you can't even get a pamphlet out of that. That's not even a paragraph. So, let me kind of give you a, a context for what I'm talking about. Everybody's heard of the Trinity, um, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Uh, in Christian terms, the triune God, they call it. Well, actually, in heaven, there are no distinctions in terms of spirit. It's not Big Papa spirit, and, uh, and Baby Jesus spirit, and um, angelic uh, Holy Spirit spirit, you know. Uh, it's the, the distinction between the three, they're all spirit. They're all eternal. They don't, you, they don't have any differences in appearance because there are no appearances. <laughs> it's, it's just all pure light. And you can't say, okay, light, who's the papa light here? And uh, who's the baby light here? And who's, that, who's the comforter light? Who's the, who's the bridge light? You know, you can't tell the difference in terms of, what, of the essence of, of what they are because they're all spirit. And they're all in relationship. And they all communicate through what we would call divine mind, uh, or through the thoughts of God. All the thoughts of God are completely shared. So, Christ has all the thoughts of God. Holy Spirit has all the thoughts of God. They're all sharing the thoughts of God, because God is the Creator. And the Creator shares everything. This is not like earth parents, you know, where uh, they, they seem to create you, we'll say they make you as a baby, and then they feed you, they comfort you, in the best case scenarios. <laughs> they, they give you sustenance to a certain point, and then usually they go, okay, you're on your own now. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> listen, you're on your own, don't, don't come back to me. Well, what about my inheritance? Get out of here. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, they, they're happy to cut the cords. That's not the way God thinks. God doesn't ever cut the cords. Every thought that God's ever thought is always shared freely in spirit, in spirit. And so, that's what the Kingdom of Heaven, it's increasing, not in size or shape, because there is no size or shape, but it's ever increasing, light extending and radiating and radiating without end. So there's an increase without time dimensions, because there is no time in eternity. It's, it's hard to actually talk about with the words, because uh, the words actually fail. But I'm trying to point as best as I can how different it is from time and space. Because there's no cutoffs, there's no disinheritance, there's no catch you later, uh, there's no talk to the hand. <laughs> I'm tired of listening to you. Talk to the hand. No, there's none of that. It's all connected and it's all pure spirit. And the only distinction you might say in terms of light is that that God created Christ. They're all eternal beings, so it's not like a time sense of creation, but in, in eternity, um, God came first, and even that, you can't use time ideas to, with that word first, because God created first and forever and for always. That's a better way of saying first in eternity. First and forever and forever and forever. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a before idea. In the, in the world, first, what comes first comes before. Well, in one sense, the Creator 
is like the cause, the big cause with a capital C, and Christ is an effect of that cause. So when we think about our relationship to Jesus, the first thing that comes to me is, if I'm identified as an earth creature, if I'm identified as a time creature, if I'm identified as a personality, and the essence of Jesus is the Christ. Jesus, Jeshua is just like an earth name, Jeshua. But actually Jeshua woke up and he realized that the Christ is real and Jeshua was part of the dream. <laughs> so when Christians say they want a personal relationship with Jesus, my first question is, okay, if you believe you're a person that we established that, <laughs> but what if this person wants a relationship with an eternal being called Christ? Ooh, I think they're on different levels here. <laughs> one's, one's a dream figure and one is the living Christ, living in the mind of God. Whoa, you talk about, now that's an interesting relationship. Everybody's trying to talk to me about same-sex marriage and biracial marriages and everything. Whoa, that's a big one right there from a personality relating to an eternal being. How do you do that? How do you do that? Well, I would say you, you, the one who believes it's a personal being should be open and receptive to guidance and instruction that comes from the eternal being through the Holy Spirit. Because this eternal being is so pure that it's in the mind of God, and this eternal being is so pristine that it, it is pure spirit. Christ is pure spirit and so is God. Now the Holy Spirit takes on a teaching function in which he, he can see the error, but he knows the error is not real. He can he, he has the memory of God's love, but he also can see the error. So that's why the Holy Spirit is called the Comforter or the Bridge, because the Holy Spirit takes on a function that can reach your mind where it believes it is, where we have believed we are. If, if, if we actually truly have our life and being in heaven, but we believe we're in time and space, now the Holy Spirit has to reach this sleeping mind with words and symbols to teach it that it's not where it thinks it is. It's, it, in fact, it's never been there. He's a real nowhere man, living in his nowhere land, making all his nowhere plans for nobody. And you, now the Beatles were channeling, now you, you get an idea of what the Holy Spirit's dealing with. Nowhere man, please listen, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Nowhere man, the world is at your command. It's at your command when you join with the Holy Spirit. Now what about Jesus? Where, if Jesus already ascended and now the Jesus is gone and the Christ is, is living in the mind of God, what about Jesus? Well, there's a nice part in the Course where Jesus, it comes through and it says, Jesus shared your dreams and shares them still. Oh, wow. Thank you. Jesus shared your dreams and shares them still. To me, this is the aspect that we're talking about, that connection with Jesus. It's really synonymous with the Holy Spirit because remember, the Holy Spirit can see the error. He can see the dream, but he knows the dream's not real. That's why the Holy Spirit is, is the teacher. That's why the Holy Spirit is the comforter. That's why the Holy Spirit is the bridge. And when we read that beautiful part in the Course that Jesus shared your dreams and shares them still, it's talking about the Holy Spirit using the symbols. Now that's the kind of relationship you want to have with Jesus. You want to have a relationship with a presence that knows sickness is impossible, that knows that pain is impossible, that knows that guilt is impossible, that 
that knows your divine innocence is reality and doesn't see you guilty ever in any seeming circumstance, in any seeming situation. Wow! Now that's a friend. Someone who's always accessible and always sees your innocence and knows you as you truly are and shares your dreams still to lead you out of the dreams.